Kevin Ward Jr. was born on May 23rd, 1994 in Port Laden, New York, with his mother named Pamela Cobalt Ward and his father named Kevin Ward Sr. He also had three sisters named Christy Kavanaugh, Kayla Herring, and Caitlin Ward. Kevin's first exposure to racing was when he was four months old when one of his sisters put Kevin on her lap and took him for a spin at a short track where the father was in the middle constructing in their backyard. Kevin Ward Sr. with a smirk recalled that moment and said that Pamela, the mother of Kevin Jr., was not too happy with the ride. While Pamela was not too happy with Kevin Jr.'s first ride, Kevin Ward Jr. was laughing the entire time. Before I talk about his racing career, I did my best to find as much information as I can about a short racing career and his racing stats and all those informations. However, it has not been easy, so bear with me. If there is anything, any other information about his life and career that I have missed, please feel free to add them in the comments below. I would gladly appreciate that. Thank you guys so much for listening. Let's continue with this episode. At the age of four, Kevin Ward Jr. will go racing in go-karts in 1999. The Ward family racing team purchased a 270 Michael Sprint car in his first ever race. Kevin Ward Jr. would finish in second and would eventually get his first Michael Sprint win. For the next eight years, Kevin Ward Jr. would win 250 races in six national championships. As Kevin Ward Jr. got older, he would race in bigger cars from go karts to Michael Sprints, winning 30 more times and would move to sprint cars. Kevin Ward Jr. had a goal in his racing career. His ultimate goal was to compete in the World of Outlaw Sprint Car Series. Kevin Ward Sr. said that he liked sliding around in dirt. Kevin Ward Jr. made his Empire Super Sprint Series debut as a rookie in 2010 and won Rookie of the Year at the age of 16 and finished 7th of points. He would have some funding thanks to his father and other sponsors. In the spring of 2014, Kevin Ward Jr. bought two sprint cars for about $120,000. Throughout his time in the Empire Super Sprint Series, Kevin Ward Jr. has won four races. Unfortunately, on the night of August 9, 2014 at Canadega Motorsports Park in Canadega, New York, tragedy was strike. On lap 14 to 25 of the race, Kevin Ward Jr. and Tony Stewart were side by side, coming into the first two corners. Both made contact, and Ward would spin and crash out. During the caution, Kevin Ward Jr. would get out of his car, angrily pointing at Tony Stewart. While angrily pointing at smoke, he would get closer to the active racetrack with each car passing by under yellow. Unfortunately, Tony Stewart would hit Kevin Ward Jr. with his right rear tire, and Ward would lose his life. Thus, the investigation begins. On August 10th, 3 a.m. at a news conference, Ontario County Sheriff Philip C. Povero confirms Ward's death and identity and announces an investigation into the fatality. Povero says Tony Stewart was fully cooperative and indicates the incident isn't being investigated as a criminal matter, indicating that Tony Stewart would still race at Watkins Glen for the cup race. Greg Zipadali, Vice President of Competition for Stewart Ice Racing confirmed three hours before the race that Tony Stewart would not race at Watkins Glen. And Regan Smith, Junior Motorsports number 7 driver in the NASCAR Nationwide Series, would replace Tony Stewart for the cup race. This was Tony Stewart's second straight time missing the Watkins Glen Cup race. Back in 2013, Tony Stewart suffered a broken leg in a bad four-car crash during a sprint car race to Iowa during a 30-lap feature of the Front Row Challenge. He was out for the remainder of the 2013 NASCAR Sprint Cup Series season. But with the tragic death of Kevin Ward Jr., Tony Stewart is obviously not focusing on NASCAR as a driver and owner. 
After the accident, Tony Stewart made a statement saying, quote, There aren't words to describe the sadness I feel about the accident that took the life of Kevin Ward Jr. It's a very emotional time for all involved. It is the reason why I decided to not participate in today's race at Watkins Glen. My thoughts and prayers are with the family, friends, and everyone affected by this tragedy, end quote. On August 11, 2014, the autopsy confirmed that Kevin Ward Jr. died of massive blunt force trauma. Meanwhile, with the investigation for the second fan's footage to the accident, Sheriff Pavero says that there is no fact to support criminal behavior, but stresses that, at the time, the investigation remains open. On August 12, 2014, Canadia Dega Motorsports Park announced that they will resume its racing schedule the following Saturday. Sheriff Pavero says that when the investigation, which includes a forensic reconstruction of the incident, is concluded, they will meet with the district attorney's office. The next day on August 13th, a visitation that held for Kevin Ward Jr. in Boonville, New York, Mary Mourners arrived at the trainer funeral home wearing black and orange outfits to match Kevin's sprint car colors. On August 14th, 9.52 a.m., more than 500 to 700 people showed up at the 90-minute memorial service for Kevin Ward Jr. at the auditorium of South Lewis High School in Turin, New York, while the Dixie Chicks song, Godspeed, Sweet Dreams, played through speakers. That was the school where Kevin Ward Jr. graduated back in 2012. In one of the tributes, Kevin's cousin Amanda Ward Amara said that the family couldn't have been blessed by a happier person. There were some tears, but there was also some laughs while his friends remember Kevin's unique sense of humor and his Justin Bieber haircut. Katie, the other sister, jokes that he wore cologne called Pimp Juice because the ladies loved it. Kevin Virginia was laid to rest at the Port Laden Cemetery. Six hours after Kevin's funeral, Stewart House Racing announced Tony Stewart's replacement will be Jeff Burton for the second Michigan Cup race. After Michigan, Jeff Burton would make another start at the 2014 Bristol Night Race. The Bristol Night Race would be Jeff Burton's last ever NASCAR race before hanging up his helmet for good and moves up to the rebooted NASCAR NBC booth in 2015. On August 28th, almost three weeks after the tragic accident, Tony Stewart returned to the driver's seat at Atlanta Motor Speedway. However, the remorseful Hoosier would have to make a press conference the next day. Yeah, this has been one of the toughest tragedies I've ever had to deal with, both professionally and personally. And this is something that will definitely affect my life forever. This is a sadness and a pain that I hope no one ever has to experience in their life. With that being said, I know that the pain on the morning that Kevin Ward's family and friends are experiencing uh, is something that I, I can't possibly imagine. I want Kevin's father, Kevin Sr., and his mother, Pam, and his sisters, Christy and Kayla and Caitlin to know that every day I'm thinking about them and praying for them. The, the racing community is a large family, as you guys know, and everyone's saddened with this tragedy. I want to thank all my friends and family for their support through this tough emotional time and the support from the NASCAR community, my partners, all of our employees has been overwhelming. I've taken the last couple weeks off uh, out of respect for Kevin and his family and also to cope with the accident in my own way. It's given me the time to think about life and how easy it is to, to take it for granted. I miss my team, my teammates, and I miss being back in the race car, and I think that being back in the car this week with my racing family will help me get through this difficult time. I also understand that all of you have many questions and, and want a lot of answers, but however, I need to respect the ongoing investigation process and, and cannot answer and address the questions this time. Emotionally, I'm not sure if, if I could answer them anyway. I'm here to race this weekend, and I appreciate your respect, and there will be a day when I can sit here and answer the questions. Thank you. Unfortunately, Tony's return will not go as planned. 
On a restart of lap 121, Kyle Busch washed up to the track and non-intentionally put Tony Stewart into the wall. The contact knocked Tony's alignment out and had several pit stops, adding insult to injury at lap 172. Tony Stewart suffered a right front tire explosion in turn 2, which ended his night. Despite an early exit, Tony Stewart had a lot of support and was welcomed back with open arms from fans, drivers, the rest of NASCAR workers, and even his sponsors. Over a month after the accident on September 11th, the Ontario County Sheriff's Office announces that the investigation of the Kevin Ward Jr. investigation is completed and has been submitted to the District Attorney's Office for a review and will make a statement the later of the next week advising its course of action on the case. Two days after the investigation was completed, Kevin's late friend Dylan Swiernick, who was driving to number 13, honoring Kevin, finished 14th in the main feature at Old Sweekin Speedway in Ontario for the running of the Aero Express Canadian Sprint Car Nationals. On September 24th, toxicology reports revealed that Kevin Ward Jr. was under the influence of marijuana on the night he was struck and killed by Tony Stewart. In 2015, Kevin's parents filed a wrongful death lawsuit on Tony Stewart, claiming the crash was caused by Tony's recklessness. They wanted Tony Stewart to hold accountable for his actions. On Kevin's parents' side, they claimed that Tony Stewart intentionally ran over Kevin Ward Jr. and he should be held accountable and served time in prison. On Tony Stewart's side, they say that what Tony did was an accident and didn't see Kevin. After over three years of court, on April 2018, Tony Stewart and the Ward family finalized the settlement of the wrongful death lawsuit ahead of the hearing on U.S. District Court in Utica, New York. I just want to clarify that this is the brief information about the court case. I did not get everything and I do apologize if there was stuff I missed. Anyway, let's continue. Five months later, the judge dismissed the wrongful death lawsuit against Tony Stewart. And just like that, the court case was over. There were no winners or losers. Things were settled and life goes on, moving forward with only just a memory of that fateful night. After the Kevin Ward Jr. incident, NASCAR made a new rule starting at the weekend of Michigan. If drivers are involved in a crash, if the drivers are moving, they must shut off the car, lower the window net, and stay in their car until safety vehicles and ambulances along with their safety team arrives. If the drivers are walking, they must proceed directly to the ambulance or other vehicles. Drivers must stay on the racetrack and other vehicles. To continue the legacy of Kevin Ward Jr., the Kevin Ward Jr. Memorial Race is held for the Empire Super Sprint Races. There's also a Kevin Ward Jr. Memorial Scholarship Fundraiser. You can check them out on their Facebook page, link in the description below. Kevin Ward Jr. also had a girlfriend. She had a ring for Kevin that was supposed to be a pre-engagement ring. Unfortunately, she lost her boyfriend when she was about to start her senior year of high school. While there's been support and sorrow for Kevin Ward Jr., there's been criticisms about the situation. There's been criticisms about Kevin's actions from that night. He was criticized for jumping out of the car and was walking at an active racetrack with cars pacing during the yellow. As for Tony Stewart, he's gotten criticized for intentionally killing Kevin Ward Jr., even though Tony hit him with his right rear tire out of anger. That's what they say. Even the mainstream media was jumping on Tony Stewart and used his previous altercations in NASCAR to make Tony look bad and spread misinformation. Kevin's parents say that it hurts to see Tony Stewart enjoy life when he should be in jail for manslaughter. Even Jessica Friesen, who was a former girlfriend of Tony Stewart and also was competing at Canadian Dega, said that Tony turned the other direction, putting his car on the path towards Kevin Ward Jr. Jessica also says that he turned into the right and hit the throttle, which caused the tire to stand up and throw dirt and smoke from them. After the investigation, Jessica says that if he did not hit the gas, the rear of his car would not have gone to the right direction and hit Kevin. During the civil case, Jessica says that Tony tried to scare Kevin. On the other hand, there's some people who supported Tony Stewart. On the Tony Stewart side, their argument is that Tony was pacing and didn't see and wasn't aware of Kevin Ward Jr. because it was dark, even with light. He didn't see Kevin in his black fire suit and it wasn't intentional. Tony Stewart tried to avoid Kevin Ward Jr. and due to Ward's actions, he was killed. Tony Stewart would never intentionally kill someone. To this day, people still argue and debate about Tony Stewart being guilty or being innocent. It's one of the most hard and exhausting debates I've been through as a motorsports fan. Regardless of what anyone thinks about the entire situation, no opinion is going to bring back Kevin Ward Jr. Nothing will. Tony Stewart will have to deal with the terrible tragic situation for the rest of his life. The Ward family, his friends, his girlfriend, his racing competitors, 
and his community unfortunately lost a young, hardworking, and talented bright future star in making way too soon. If you want to know my opinion about this tragic situation, my opinion is that Kevin Ward Jr. made a terrible decision while being under the influence which cost his life and Tony Stewart is obviously not a murderer. The entire tragic incident was a huge mistake which costed a driver's life. Even if Kevin Ward Jr. was angry at Tony Stewart, Kevin Ward Jr. should have stayed in his car and he also shouldn't have gone close to an active racetrack where cars were pacing under yellow. Regardless and unfortunately, the racing world lost a young talented driver and a family lost their son, brother, grandson, and nephew. Kevin Ward Jr. had a bright future ahead of him. He had a goal which was sadly taken away from him due to one bad mistake and decision. My condolences go out to the Ward family. Even though they said stuff about Tony Stewart that is disagreeable, they obviously never deserve to have their family member taken away way too soon. I hope they are doing okay. Kevin Ward Jr. was just 20 years old. May he rest in peace and may he race sideways and slide in the dirt tracks above in the sky. Thank you guys so much for watching this episode of Racing Stories. I did my best to get as much information as possible. I do apologize if I got something wrong or missed something. Please feel free to comment below. This was a touchy subject and I did my best to get the story right. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Please look out for your loved ones and always stay safe. Goodbye everybody.